I'm here to take you on a little trip through bovine history. Here at White Feather Meats, the bearded butchers take livestock and turn it into wonderful meat products, calling on our 30 years of butchering experience. Of course, we couldn't do this without the men and women um, on the farming side. So I want to show you the history of bovine hanging right be here behind me. And we're going to take these carcasses. We're actually going to break them down so you can see some of the differences. Right here, I have the American bison. This is the native bovine or the native beef to this continent. So if you stood here 400 years ago and the year was 1624 and you wanted some beef, this was your only choice, the American bison. It remains literally unchanged from creation. The only difference really is the genetic pool really got narrowed when a lot of the bison were killed off. The American government, really for two reasons. One, they wanted to take away the American Indians' great resource, and they wanted to make way for the European bovine that was on its way. So they kind of blamed the bison for having diseases and things like that, so they just shot them and left them. And literally millions of bison were exterminated from North America. Thankfully, they've made a great comeback, and it's because of people like you and people like us that have eaten the animal, uh, supported the farming of the animal. So American bison, these carcasses behind me weigh um, about 350 to 360 pounds per half. Um, they've got this hump here. That's where they have that extra muscle and a little bit of extra fat some of that energy that's in their head. 750 pounds, a little more than that for the, the weight of the carcass. But that's one of the big differences. You see those long bones right there. We call those the feather bones. And Seth, in a moment, Seth's gonna break that down. We can see the ribeye. And they have an extra rib, which is a really interesting feature on the bison. However, they are bovine. They're in the same family as our next animal. This is the European beef, which of course comes in many different breeds and varieties. Some of you are familiar with your Black Anguses, your Herefords. Those were all imported here to American soil. And they started them out on just grass. So same thing that the bison ate, grass only. So we have here um, a local 100% grass-fed beef. This, this is gonna have a little less fat cover than your conventional feedlot beef, maybe a little smaller frame, and perhaps a little bit more of a yellow tint to it. So while bison is lean and higher in protein, lower in calories, lower in fat, the grass-fed beef has um, a little bit of a, a, a healthier mix of the omega-3 to 9 to omega-6 ratios than say your grain fed beef. They put on a little less fat, but this is certified 100% grass fed, comes from a local farm here um, that's close to us. We raised the buffalo here at White Feather Farm. So we, we raised these buffalo on our farm. These from a local farm. And then we're on to our conventional grain fed, grain finished beef. You can see these are classic large framed um, whether it be Black Angus or Maine Anjou or some of your more popular breeds that put on that nice big lot of muscle. And you have to remember, any one of these is made up of some delicious protein. Uh, one of the great nutrient dent resources that we have is eating animal proteins. Again, local beef brought to us. You're gonna see when we break these down, they're gonna have a little more fat cover. They're gonna have some more intermuscular marbling. And um, that's a result of their diet, which they are fed grain. Corn has a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugars. So it's gonna help them deposit some of that um, intermuscular marbling, which leads to that um, great flavor uh, and texture as well. Let's talk a little bit about hanging times on these animals. So the bison, we hang for just seven days. It only needs one week for that to dry age. It's leaner, doesn't have as much cat fat cover. The grass-fed beef and the grain-fed beef are going to get the, um, the two-week dry age. This allows some of the moisture to evaporate, allows the, uh, 
the meat to break down uh, the enzymes, become a little more tender, and then also finally it becomes a little more robust in flavor. All right, now on to the, I guess the epitome of beef science, uh, American science, the um, progression of genetics and livestock management, husbandry. We have here the American full-blooded Tajima Wagyu beef. <clears throat> You'll notice this is a got a huge front front quarter on it. Um, that's because the the Wagyu cattle are a draft breed. So in these different bovine uh, categories, although they're all from the same family, you have different genetic dispositions that have been switched on. So the bison, they've got the furry coat and the big heavy front shoulders to dig through the snow and grass. You think on the, on the Great Plains, we've got the, the, the grass-fed beef that have been selected through breeding to um, be a little smaller frame so that they don't have as much uh, uh, trouble putting on the size that they need for butcher. And of course you have your popular grain-fed breeds. But onto this Wagyu where we've taken a fertilized embryo, put it into a black Angus cow, and birthed right here on American uh, soil is a full-blooded Tajima Wagyu beef. These beef have the, um, the a genetic disposition where they've switched on an enzyme and they've stored a whole bunch of fat deep down into the muscle and that's where you get all that marbling and they did that because that was an energy source for them when they were draft animals. I think the only thing left to do right now is to break down these carcasses, take a look at what the ribeye looked like. Um, in our industry, it's standard that you will break down a carcass between the 12th and 13th rib or in the bison's case between the 13th and 14th rib because they have an extra rib. And when we break that carcass down, Seth's gonna show you, you get a great look at the ribeye area, and that's a snapshot of how much back fat it has, which tells you how much yield you'll have. It's also a snapshot of the intermuscular fat, the marbling. One more interesting thing about the bison, they are intact. They are slaughtered as bulls, and they still have a beautiful, sweet, tender flavor. The texture is awesome. And I'm just really thankful and feel super blessed that here at Whitefeather, we have the ability with the great resources that we have through our own farm, through local farms, and through our butchering knowledge that we can bring a unique blend of bovine products to our local market, which is right here through our butcher shop of Whitefeather Meats. But enough of that chatting, let's get on to the utensils and the breakdown for the side. Cutting bison today. We get a lot of questions about the knives that we use. Right now, I'm using an eight inch Victorinox. Also have the 10 inch Victorinox. These are our breaking knives and our, what we typically use for our steak cutting knives. Both available now with our bearded Butcher Blend logo stamped right into the blade. If you want a knife, Go get one. Scott brought you the brains. I'm gonna bring you the brawn. I'm gonna break these animals down. Hey, I bring brawn too. I'm yeah. not just here for well, one reason. He, the scientific approach, the presentation you gave, it was fantastic. Uh, what a great way to see all of these carcasses hanging in our cooler at one time. Um, pretty great opportunity, so we, we hope that you enjoy it. Before we get started, eight inch Victorinox, these are logoed with our Beard Butcher Blend logo, and coming soon, we have a Kydex sheath for these, which is pretty incredible. So let's just get started. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna start with the bison. We're gonna break down one half per animal, and then we're gonna go all the way through uh, and finish with the Wagyu. So let's just get started. So we're gonna do one half per uh, type of animal. So we have two animals, so we have two bison, two grass-fed, two grain-fed, and one Wagyu. So we're gonna do one half from each set. Uh, starting with the bison, 12th, and, or um, excuse me, 13th and 14th rib on the bison. We just make a cut like this. And as I go through and make the cut, Scott's gonna come back and do a little sawing action. 
and really expose that ribeye so you can get a nice up close look at the difference between all of these carcasses. So there's your bison, again, lean, not a whole lot of marbling. However, they do have an incredibly sweet and tender texture. Now on to the grass fed between the 12th and 13th rib. This is where you're gonna see a lot leaner muscle and not a lot of uh, exterior fat, not a lot of marbling on this grass fed. So you can see the, the comparison between the bison and the grass fed there side by side. Pretty cool comparison if I don't say so myself. It's not a very often um, that we get to see all of these hanging in our cooler at the same time. So now on to the grain fed, 12th and 13th rib. Same procedure. So on this, you're gonna see some more of that intermuscular marbling, and then you get that, that fat cover on there. So that's your, that's your grain fed. Now let's move on to the Tajima Wagyu, which we expect this one to have a lot more intermuscular fat. And it's, it's a little bit more difficult to find that, that rib just because of the amount of fat. So usually I just take the tip of the eight inch Victorinox and you can find that rib. Once you find it, then you can make your cut. Now let's crack the code on this one and see what we've got. Wow. Yeah, so you can see a lot more intermuscular fat, a lot more exterior fat on there. So that's pretty cool to go down through and see the difference between all four of these. Bison, you can see that ribeye section on the bison. Moving over to the grass fed, you can see that one. Grain fed, right here, a little bit more of that intermuscular fat marbling, and then down to the Tajima Wagyu, which obviously has the most. We thought that this was gonna be a pretty cool comparison so you guys could see all four hanging right in here uh, in our cooler at White Feather Meats. I do wanna take this opportunity to thank you all. We're at nearly three million subscribers right here on YouTube. And if you could do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications. We want you to know when the next video uploads from the Beard of Butchers. And oh, by the way, we're getting ready to hit one billion views right here on YouTube. So stay tuned, we're gonna have more content coming for you. Um, but we thought this was a pretty cool visual. And we also wanna know in the comments, which one would you prefer to eat? Which one are you gonna feed your family and friends? Because we wanna know, is it Wagyu? Is it grain fed? Is it grass fed? Or is it bison? Let us know. And until next time, see ya.